The U.S. and Afghanistan have signed an agreement that will allow American forces to stay in the war-torn country after the 2014 pullout of foreign combat troops. The new pact foresees the possibility of American troops training Afghan forces and targeting what has been called the remnants of militants in Afghanistan. The deal was signed late Tuesday after U.S. President Barack Obama arrived in Afghanistan on a surprise visit. He returned to the Bagram Air Base to address the American forces after the signing ceremony. Well, from Berkeley, I'm joined uh, by Con Hallinan. He's with the Foreign Policy and Fo Focus. Uh, welcome to the program, sir. Mr. Hallinan, uh, what does this deal mean? I mean, why is it that the U.S. is keeping its troops in Afghanistan beyond the deadline? And yet, every time we see that a deadline is approached, again, a new agreement, a new pact is, uh, is uh, signed to uh, let U.S. troops stay more in Afghanistan. Well, the idea behind keeping American troops in Afghanistan, that's sort of been, um, I guess you would say, a dream, kind of, of the United States for for some time. The idea of having um, a military force on a, a semi-permanent basis, or maybe even a permanent basis, in Central Asia and in a strategically placed country like Afghanistan, um, obviously, from a strategic point of view, this is an enormous benefit to the United States. They're right on the Iranian border, they're on the Chinese border, on the Pakistan border. They're on the border of Central Asia. This is a region of not only um, uh, the strategic importance in terms of the countries in the region, but also gas and uh, energy supplies. Um, the idea of 15,000 troops, and that's what they're talking of, 15,000 Special Forces troops, uh, placed in Afghanistan like this, um, obviously is what the Americans had in mind when they first went into Afghanistan back in 2001. And of course, in these tough economic times, I mean, big budget is uh, needed for the uh, U.S. troops and the Army uh, to stay in Afghanistan. I mean, how, how much does this idea resonate with the Americans? Not very well. Um, at this point, the last set of polls that I saw indicated that 69 percent of the American people wanted all American troops out of Afghanistan, and, and that even included uh, a majority of Republicans. Uh, at this point, we're talking about mm, in the range of about $5 billion uh, a year given to the Afghan army and then to support um, these 15,000 uh, troops um, every, you know, uh, each year will be a couple of billion more. So at a time of serious economic uh, crisis and enormous uh, austerity and cutbacks in the United States, the idea that the United States is going to spend six, seven, eight, nine, maybe more, ten billion dollars or so each year in, in Afghanistan, I don't think that's going to sit very well. I mean, uh, I mean, the longer U.S. forces stay in Afghanistan, uh, we see instances of PTSD uh, among the U.S. soldiers, both uh, in Afghanistan and uh, uh, those who are returning back to the U.S. I mean, how, what, will we, what will we expect from the Afghan people? Because we saw instances of uh, the Quran burning in, the, in, the, in Afghanistan. I mean, what would we expect with the Afghans from this point in time well, now on? Well, it seems to me that one of the things that you, when you have an occupation like this that goes on for a long time, uh, you're automatically going to uh, develop friction between the occupying force and, and the locals. I mean, I, 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 that's never not been the case. And uh, I can think back through history of, of various... Uh, examples that would uh, illustrate that. So you're going to see a kind of a rising tension there. The other thing is that when you mention about the fact that a lot of the soldiers are suffer uh, suffering from uh, the delayed stress uh, responses, etc., a lot of these soldiers have been deployed to Afghanistan three, four, five, sometimes six times. And during that time, they've been subjected to roadside bombs and ambushes and all this kind of stuff. This is a very deeply wounded and frayed military operation that's going on in Afghanistan at this side. So on, I think on one hand you have troops um, that are always kind of on the verge of cracking, and, and we've seen that happen not just with the Koran burning, but the murder of, um, of civilians, but also because those troops are coming home, and what they're finding is that uh, a lot of this damage which is done is longstanding, is very expensive to treat. Uh, and is going to add up to enormous medical bills. At one point, Joseph Stiglitz, the Nobel Prize winner, suggested that the bill 
final bill for Afghanistan uh, and uh, Iraq would come out to about $4 trillion by the time uh, everything's counted up. Indeed. Well, on that note, we'll leave it there. Many thanks uh, to Con Hallinan with Foreign Policy in Focus from Berkeley. Thanks for your time there, sir.